Welcome back. Now I'd like to present to you a few essential definitions that help you to get grounded and be able to better understand the language we'll be using in this course. So the first concept I'd like to put forward is the essential word of policy. And what do we mean by policy? What is a policy? So I just take this definition. I found this to be very helpful. This is from Wikipedia. It's a course or principle of action adopted or proposed by a government, a party, a business, or an individual. So for example, when you decide that you are not going to smoke cigarettes anymore, you're actually creating a policy for yourself. You might stick with that policy. You might miss it a few times. You might abandon the policy, but you're setting a policy for yourself. Businesses do this, political parties do this, and governments do this all the time. They set policy, which is a principle of action for how a certain activity will in fact be carried out or governed. So that's the first one. Second essential term is the word called politics. Because in policy, politics is always there. And what do we mean by the word politics? I mean, people use the word politics all the time and have a very hard time every time I ask coming up with a definition for what it means. So here's my favorite definition. Politics means the way we decide who gets what, when, where, how, and why. If you just remember those three words, who gets what, then you're going to be grounded in policy. So what we're talking about is, for example, electoral politics. Two people running for president. Who's going to get the White House? Two people running for a seat in the United States Congress. Who's going to get the right to represent the people in that district. Somebody wants to be mayor, who's going to get the mayor's office? Example. So electoral politics is all about who gets what. And we think about, for example, budget politics that happens every year at every level of government when they establish their budgets for the coming year. And it's a big, frankly, it's a big orgy of who gets what. So it's who gets the right to pay the money into government that will be used to finance the services of government. How much from taxes or how little from taxes or excises or other kinds of fees and assessments. But then government has all this money to spend over the course of the year and who gets what share of that money? A thorough political exercise. Now a lot of people in American society are conditioned to believe that politics is bad. It's evil. It's what happens when things go wrong. What I like to teach people is not that politics is wonderful or glorious. What I like to have people think about is politics is a neutral. It's not necessarily good or bad. It depends upon the values that you bring to your exercise of politics and your judgment of how politics works. Sometimes you find ways that things go in politics that you totally like and other times ways that you dislike. But it's not politics itself, because politics is as innate to us as breathing, as human beings. But it is how people's values get demonstrated in their exercise of politics. And that's what you should take issue with and be concerned about, is not politics itself, but the values that people bring to their exercise of it. Okay, a third term. The third term is culture. And culture is important simply because of the definition itself. The one I like is this. Culture means the way we do things around here, wherever here may be. So I live in Boston. We have a unique culture in the city of Boston that is distinct from New York, from San Francisco, from Austin, Texas, from Tallahassee, Florida. Every place has their own unique culture. Even our, for example, our baseball teams, there's such a different culture from, for example, Red Sox nation versus New York Yankees nation or any other place. It's just a different way that things are done around there. And culture matters because one of the most difficult things to do in life is to try to change an organization's or a society's culture. It takes a lot of difficult work 
and a lot of what we're trying to do in healthcare policy affects trying to influence culture. So let's just look at one more quick definition, and that puts two of these words together with the term political culture. Political culture, what do we mean by that? What I mean by that is this, the way we decide who gets what, when, where, how, and why around here. Because just as you have different cultures wherever you go, you also have different political cultures. And if you want to try to change something in society that involves politics, you have to understand the way decisions get made around there. I worked in the U.S. Senate for a couple of years during the writing of the Affordable Care Act. I worked in the Senate. There was also on the other side of Capitol Hill, the House of Representatives. And I can tell you the political culture in the United States Senate is nothing like the political culture in the House of Representatives. And so if you want to be effective and understand how to shape things and to get what you want, it's essential for you to understand the political culture and how that plays into your success or your failure in achieving what you want.